This clip is going to generate a pivot table where we have two columns involved in the actual grid plus some plus some numbers. So question two on the left hand side here says re using a pivot table show the average player age broken down by county and within county by sponsor. Display the age value with two digits after decimal play point. In the pivot table put the county in the rows area and put the sponsor in the columns area. And include two digits in the decimal point in the age data that's displayed in the pivot table. So what we have here is we have scholarship data. And as I said in the previous clip, it's structured, it's organized. Um, it has column headings and then the data in each column is consistent. So column E is all the ages. Um, column F is all the counties. And column M in this case is all the sponsors. So they're the, the three main columns we're interested in. So in Microsoft Excel, this sheet here called scholarships contains the data and each pivot table we generate, we want to produce it in a new, sh a new sheet. So when we go to insert the pivot table up to the insert option and choose pivot table, it hasn't selected the cells. It's just given me uh, cell M to cell M. So the range of cells hasn't been selected. So I need to, first of all, uh, it's actually just, sorry, it's just, it's just chosen column M rather. It hasn't chosen the entire block of data. So I must have been clicked on column M when I um, went into that option. So I need to cancel that and go back out and select the entire set of data. And go down all 100 rows. So that's the first thing you, you're doing here is you're choosing the data that's going to be the input or the raw material for the pivot table. And then when we go up to insert and choose pivot table, You'll notice that the uh, that the border is around the entire block of data now, rather than just the cell, the column that was there a minute ago. So now it's telling me that the scholarship, the table or range of data that's relevant to this pivot table or will be the input to it, starts at A1 and it ends at M101. And that sounds good because there's 100 rows in there and column A is the start and column M is the end. And the other feature we have to be aware of is that we want this in a new worksheet, not a work existing worksheet in this case, because we want each pivot table to be in a separate sheet. So when we OK that, it gives us a skeleton of a pivot table. Let's move it over here out of the way so it's um, easier to read. And on my left is this uh, pivot table number one. It's called by default and it's currently empty. It's currently blank and to populate it with fields, I have to go over to this right hand area, the pivot table field area and choose the county and the sponsor fields because they're required. So I need those two and I also need the age. So I choose uh, county first of all. And then I choose sponsor. And what it's doing initially is just put the sponsor underneath the county. OK, so I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. So I have the Cavan, for example, and then there's four sponsors there, Allianz, Sintra, Liberty, Lidl. Uh, down to Kerry, it's AIB, Allianz, Liberty, Lidl, Super Value. And the data, is, it, it might be fine that way, but my question asks it for me to have a slightly different layout. So the, uh, the other variable in the pivot table in this occasion is the age. So I tick on the age, and now it gives me the sum of the ages, but the question asks for the average age. So I need to go into my um, value field list here on my right hand side. So by default under the, in the values zone of this quadrant here. So I have my filters, I have my columns, my rows and my values. So as you can see here that the, the rows area con contains both county and sponsor at the moment. And then my values area is the sum of my age, but I want that to be the average age. So I go into my value field settings. And I change from sum to average and observe my results and the results are looking good. There's, they're now averages. The question asks me to uh, display them with two digits after decimal, po decimal point. So I can click on column B if I wish and do it that way. Go into my format cells option and then choose um, number and uh, narrow it down to two. Okay, so now there's two digits after, after decimal point. But the one feature of my um, pivot table that I don't like as, as according to the question or doesn't meet the requirements of the question is that it says in the pivot table, put the county in the rows area and put the sponsor in the columns area. So by default, the, um, the both the county and the sponsor 
pop into the um, rows zone. And that makes it quite a long, narrow pivot table. Whereas you can lay it out differently. And the way you can lay it out differently is just go down to the rows area and drag the sponsor and drop it into the columns area. And now when I bring away the data again, I now have my, it's a more readable looking pivot table. So it's the, the counties are still in the rows and the uh, sponsors are here in the columns. So it starts with AIB in column B, goes across to Alliance and all the other various sponsors. And so when I, when I read it now, what I see here for Cavan is here's Cavan's sponsors. So Alliance, the average um, age of the, the, um, the players that are sponsored by Alliance and Cavan is 20 years of age. Over to Centra, the average age of of a centrist sponsored players in Cavan is 23 and so on. So overall here, the average of those four values is 21.4. So the overall average of all the Cavan um, sponsorship, play, sp Cavan players that are sponsored by the various sponsored is 21.40 years. And down through the various uh, sections in the table, I can read off the county from the row and I can read off the column, the um, in the column, I can read off the sponsor. So that's how to build a pivot table that has the the some of the data or one of the labels or the, the fields we're summarizing by in the row and the other in the column. So I can narrow those rows or columns as I see fit. And I'll just do that to make the pivot table a small bit more legible over here on the right hand side. So I can move around my columns if I wish. Instead, if I wanted the sponsor in the, if I wanted to put them in the opposite places, I could drag county over to my to my to the columns area and drag sponsor back to the rows. So I can I can once I've generated it, I can play around with it. So the other things I might like to do with a pivot table is we'll say in some cases change the labels here. So I want to get the the average. So the it's the average age is up here in A. So I can change that if I wish. And I can change my column labels as well. Um, likewise, I can eliminate some of my counties if I want to. So here I can go down and we'll say, or sorry, eliminate some of my, I'm on the row labels, which is the sponsor. Sorry, I've changed my, my grid. So I'll put them back to it the way they were a moment ago. I'll put county back in the rows and I'll put sponsor back in the columns. And now I'll go down here and I'll eliminate some of the counties. If the question doesn't ask that, but if I did want to eliminate the counties, I could say eliminate Westmeath and Wexford from the list and they disappear. And likewise over here, if I want to eliminate, we'll say O'Neill's and Lidl are super value from the list, K and L currently, I'll be able to go into this zone and eliminate those two. So that's how to generate a pivot table where you have two dimensions to it. You have a row dimension and you have a column dimension. So it allows us to look at things from, from those two, those combined perspectives. So that's the end of this clip.